this because they have the issues with the with the TV screen, so I'm just gonna have to use a laptop. So I can, I'll explain what's on there, but can everyone see the general gist of this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
You can make the sponge out of your main ingredients, so things like eggs, flour, butter, milk, but your customer probably isn't going to be happy with that. To make it a really good cake, you have to add things like icing and decoration, and that makes a birthday cake. So the, the sponge, you can imagine it as your macros, your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats, but you also need those vitamins and minerals. They help to absorb nutrients, they also help to metabolize your food, and they also help to, with simple bodily functions like brain cell function and loads of other things. So carbohydrates is really important. They'll probably make up the bulk of your meal. So things like potatoes, rice, pasta. Um, they are split up into two main carbohydrates processed carbohydrates and unprocessed carbohydrates. Now I know it probably sounds really confusing, but the best way to think about carbohydrates is through simple carbs and complex carbs. What you guys need as athletes and as students are complex carbs. They digest a lot slower than simple carbs and it gets you through your day, it gets you through your training session. Um, so when you're looking at carbohydrates to include in your meals, the best way to think about it is thick, brown and close to the ground. So replacing your white rice with brown rice. White rice is a simple carbohydrate. Brown rice is a complex carbohydrate, so it digests a lot slower. So it means you're fuller for the rest of the day. Um, protein is also really important. It'll probably make up the second bulk of your meal. So things like chicken, fish, um, your regular meats. But also things like nuts have quite a bit of protein. Um, Things like chickpeas and some other pulses have quite a good amount of protein in there. And then your fats will probably make up about 20% of your meals. And fats can also be classified into some unhealthy fats, but also some healthy fats. And fats are really important for healthy brain function and also for cell regeneration. I'll get back to the importance of fats within your meals later on, but um, just keep that in mind. And then your micronutrients are things like vitamins and minerals, and you can find that in your fire of day. So don't forget that because you'll probably find the most of your vitamins and minerals in there. Now, quite a few people ask me if it's um, important to supplement vitamins and minerals. I don't think it is. I think you can probably find the most vitamins and minerals within fruits and vegetables. Um, so just make sure that you are getting fire of day. Okay, timings. Timings of your meals are actually a lot more important than people think. Um, so the timing and regularity of eating throughout the day helps ensure athletes' um, appetites are covered and thus the nutrient requirements are met. So the best way to think about this is the body takes about two to four hours to digest a meal, depending on what that meal is. Now like I said earlier, if you have white rice, um, let's say your meal is white rice, um, chicken and something like cooked beans, that will probably take about two hours to digest because they're simple. It, the body can digest a lot quicker. If you replace the white rice with uh, brown rice, you'll find that it actually takes a lot longer to digest that meal, and that's probably what you want when you're training. So, um, depending on what type of meal, so if you train at 5 p.m., let's say you train at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., the best time to have a meal would then be about 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., or maybe 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., because it allows the body to digest the meal and therefore have the nutrients ready for when you're training. Um, and then post-training, it's most efficient to have something, a meal or a quick snack about 30 to 90 minutes after exercise. That's because your body is depleted of its glycogen stores, which I'll get to in just a second. It's also depleted of quite a few minerals and electrolytes, which is what keeps us hydrated. So after exercise, you do want to sort of replace what you've exerted back into the body to ensure that you don't um, Feel one time down. Okay, we're going to go through specifics um, about after training and before training. I think it's important to talk about after training first because this is probably when you have to be the most mindful about nutrition. So, um, after training, the body has used up most of its glycogen store. Now, glycogen is just it's really simple, it's what the body transfers carbohydrates to. So, when you have carbohydrates, your body then breaks it down into smaller, simpler sugars and stores it in the muscles and in the liver as glycogen. And that's what that's the energy that your body uses. So they just think of glycogen as petrol. <laughs> um, so after 60 to 90 minutes of exercise, which you guys probably do on drills, just, <laughs> just after drills, uh, no, the entire training session, um, the body has used up most of its electrolytes. And that's 
Electrolytes is just a really fancy word for hydration. It's what keeps you hydrated. Um, so they also have to be replaced as soon as possible. So having something like a little bit of squash with water can actually help to hydrate the body much better than just a simple glass of water. Um, and our muscles have also been inserted. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I'll explain it a little bit. When you're training, have you, have you ever felt really sore the next day after a training session? Do you know what happens to your muscles during that training session? Little tiny little tears, tears of the muscle actually happen. So when you're exercising, your muscles are actually breaking down. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. What happens the next day or when you're sleeping, the muscles repair itself bit by bit, and that's what leads our muscles to grow. So during training, your muscles will have exerted themselves. So the best thing to have after a training session is protein. Because when you're sleeping, that protein is used to repair those muscles that you've just torn, a little bit, and to make them grow stronger the next time. That's after training. So before training, probably equally as important, but it's a little bit more complicated. Um, carbohydrates are our main source of energy. So I'll explain glycogen stores a bit more um, here. So I talked about complex and simple carbohydrates. And um, the thing with simple carbohydrates, some of the foods that fall into that category are things like chocolate, sweets, um, white bread, white rice. Um, they, are, they do differ across the spectrum, but they are included within simple carbohydrates. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have simple carbohydrates, but the best time to probably have them is just before a training session because they're ready to use for your training session. So after school, you guys will probably feel a little bit tired from the hard day work at school. So before a training session, it's actually quite useful to have some simple carbohydrates because your body is like ready to use that as soon as possible. But throughout the day, you also want to make sure that you top up your glycogen stores steadily. Having things like complex carbs for your lunch and for your breakfast will also ensure that you have that energy when it comes to your training session later in the day. Um, is everyone following? So if you have any questions, feel free to just shout them out or ask me. I know it can be a bit complicated, but I just want you guys to understand um, why you're feeding your body what you're feeding it. Um, so complex carbohydrates actually break down into smaller sugars, like I mentioned before, and they're absorbed by the muscles and the lips. So you want to make sure that your glycogen stores are fully topped up. So just think about the fuel tank in a car. So complex carbohydrates will help to fill that fuel tank. Um, having enough carbohydrates also makes sure that we don't use protein for energy. Now, if our body doesn't have enough carbohydrates, what it will do is break down protein into energy because it hasn't received that carbohydrate. Now, we don't want that to happen because then we won't have enough protein to repair our muscles. So make sure we have enough carbohydrates. We'll ensure that we, we are still growing and repairing our muscles and we don't feel like rubbish the next day. If anyone's ever woken up from a training session the next day and felt really rubbish, chances are it's probably because you didn't have enough nutrients the day before. Um, so yeah, if we don't have enough carbohydrates, that's when our body starts to hit the wall. Now, you've probably heard of marathon runners who describe a really tough part of their race as hitting the wall. That's when the body sort of runs out of glycogen stores and tries to use other energy sources such as your proteins and fats. So make sure that we get enough of all three of those macronutrients will be really useful for your training. So I'm just going to give you some examples of some meals. So breakfast. Do not skip breakfast. When they say it's the most important part of the day, the most important part of the meal of the day, they really mean it. Now what happens overnight is your body depletes its energy stores, it uses all that protein to repair itself from the hard day's work before. So when you wake up, you've had about eight hours of nothing, of no eating, nothing. So the first thing you want to do is replace that as quickly as possible. If you don't, the body automatically goes into a shutdown mode, and that's to sort of pres preserve the energy that it's got so that it can continue throughout the rest of the day. So the first thing you want to do is actually replace those energy stores. Um, yeah. If, so if we've done body goes into shutdown mode and our energy becomes limited, that's when we start to feel tired throughout the day. And unfortunately, our academic performance could take a hit if we don't have breakfast. And it also ensures that you feel full throughout the day. Um, lunch. Plenty of carbohydrates during lunch. Um, only because you will be going to the rest of the day, you most likely will be going to a training session or continuing with some physical activity. So making sure we get those complex carbs around lunchtime can ensure that we stay fit and fighting throughout the rest of the day. Don't ignore protein though. I understand that I'm saying complex carbs are really important, but protein actually helps us to feel full. 
So ensuring that we have a bit of protein with lunch alongside our carbohydrates means that we don't get hungry and pick up that chocolate bar or those sweets that you could see <laughs> later on. Okay, dinner. This is the meal that should probably have the most protein out of all three meals of the day. You will have some protein through things like porridge. Um, they have small parts of protein, but like I said, overnight your body will use protein to repair itself and get ready for the next day. So dinner is the best time to have all of those proteins um, to make sure that it can repair itself overnight. Also make sure you stay hydrated through the day. That's really important. Now a lot of people do this, and I've been guilty of this in the past, is just before training session, I will drink a lot of water as quickly as possible just to make sure I'm hydrated. That's not a good idea because most likely you will get stitches and that's, that's usually how it happens if you've drunk too much water. If you drink water regularly throughout the day, let's say about every 20 to 30 minutes, um, you'll find that your body can hydrate itself quite steadily. Um, snacks. This is why I bought these guys. So a lot of people say, you know, if you have good meals, then you don't have to snack. As athletes, I would disagree with that statement because I think snacking is a great way to get those extra calories, those extra nutrients that you might miss through your meals or that you might deplete through um, training. So it's a great way to give our body those extra nutrients. Um, this doesn't mean that it's okay to snack on sweets, chocolates, crisps. I don't want you to go home and say, well, crisps, athletes say it's really good to snack. No, it doesn't mean snacking on chocolates and sweets. What it does mean is ensuring things like we get our five a day, we get those extra carbs. Um, it also means that we don't sort of get hungry just before our training session and feel really low and low on energy. So another way, great way to top up the glycogen stores quickly is through things like simple carbs just before a training session. Um, things like energy drinks does fall into that category, but they're perhaps not the best way to get those simple carbs. Things like bananas are actually um, a great way of getting the simple carbs just before a training session. Um, most fruits, um, these, which I brought along, which I found the same fruits. Looking at you, Dad. <laughs> I found them. Thank you. <laughs> Shop at the same table. Um, so I thought I'd bring some samples for you guys to try today. So the first thing we're going to try is a great snack. So this is um, I'm just going to get that. some almond butter. Now almonds and most nuts have a great source of protein, but they're also a great source of fats, healthy fats, which is what we need sometimes when we use a lot of our carbohydrates for energy. So I'm going to combine almond butter with some apples. So if you guys want to come up to the front and dip some apple slices into the almond butter, let me know what you think. Okay. Also, what would you say that you see when you have a snack? What would you say that you have? Snack. Crisps. Crisps. Um, I have one. Why do you think crisps aren't good? It's not healthy, but it's too Come on, it's nice. It's really nice. It's really nice. The thing with crisps is that they have a lot of unhealthy fats. And that's what helps us, well that's what leads us to, um, to get a bit of beef. Really do you like it? Mm. Around, you don't have to queue up, come on. It's quite similar to peanut butter. It is similar to peanut butter. <laughs> what do you guys think of the apple and the amber butter? It's really nice. I'd better try some just to make sure. Just to make sure, right? <laughs> and why do you think this is good? This is a great snack to have after a training session. Do you like it? Give me all the information that I was giving you. Do you like this? and almond butter. Why do we think that's a good meal to, a good snack to have after a training session? Given all the information that I've just told you about carbohydrates and fats, why do you think apples and almond butter are good to have after a training session? Protein. protein, yeah, you can find protein in the almond butter. Almonds actually have a good ratio of protein slash fat. Um, why the fruit? Why are we giving fruit after a training session? So apples have natural sugars. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So fruits have natural sugars, and um, they're also probably more more towards the spectrum of simple carbohydrates. Now, like I said, you deplete your body of glycogen stores. So to have simple carbs straight after the training session can quickly replace those glycogen stores, ready for the next day. Um, 
So that's most that's more of the post-training side. You probably also have that pre-training. But what I brought here is some multi-grain rice cakes, also to have with the almond butter. So do you guys want to come up and try this before I explain? <laughs> 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 Actually, my okay, get some of this as well. Yeah, they've got chocolate. Oh, you know, <laughs> Is that nice, Savannah? Is it nice? Are you enjoying it? It's a chocolate one. This one. Okay. Alright, guys, given the information I gave you about complex carbohydrates, why do you think I'm giving you multi grain rice cakes and not normal rice cakes? Like, you can't just say it's not carbohydrates. Right, guys, I'll give you a tip. I brought multi grain. Right. It's not normal. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's longer lasting because multi grain, it's probably in the name, multi grain is a lot more complex than normal rice cakes. So, normal rice cakes are made with white rice. So, if you have a multi grain rice cake like this one, you can see the different colours in the rice cakes. And, like I mentioned before, um, you can move the colours into your build. Multi-grain rice cakes are more complex carb. So if you have loads of these before training, alongside something that includes fats, um, it, talks, it, it releases energy a lot steadier than having white rice, for example. So that will probably help you later on towards the end of your training session when you're probably feeling a bit low and very tired, because it will start to digest those a lot quicker. Okay, someone had carrots and hummus. <laughs> Is anyone <laughs> Why are carrots? Look how colourful they are. Another hit. <laughs> Why have I given you carrots and hummus? Why carrots? Let's think about macronutrients and micronutrients. It's what? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, ensuring a colourful plate means you probably get more vitamins. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see. <laughs> didn't see your hand up. So, having more colours probably ensures that you have a lot more vitamins and minerals. So remember, they're really important to keep the functions going and um, also help maintain the body's natural systems. So carrots are a really great source of vitamin A. You probably don't need to know that, but fruits are a really rich source of vitamins and minerals. So including colour into your day-to-day -day meals um, is really important. Hummus is also a great source of protein. Um, chickpeas are a really great source of protein. So anyone who's sort of vegan or vegetarian, you can find protein in other, in other sources. Um, okay, so we have some dried nuts and fruits here. Anyone want to come to no. <laughs> oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that. 